very good morning to all of you, distinguished panelists, and uh, my uh, present colleagues and friends here. To start with, uh, my earlier uh, speaker had spoken about you know, uh, one side the IT Act, other side the Electronic Service Delivery Bill, you know, the legal side, the policy side issues, then uh, Department of IT at one side looking after all the major policies and issues. Uh, but at the helm, it is the department, actually the department, be it a line ministry, be it a state government department, be it any agency or local governments as such. It is the department who has to take the lead and perhaps we have done that you know, as part of External Affairs Ministry, I am proud to say that you know the way uh, earlier the passport issuance system was, and today uh, the way we have done it. You know, this is the way uh, one has to look into. When uh, any government department, uh, you know, as I rightly said, be it uh, Central Line Ministry, State Department, or local, local governments, you know, we we need to look uh, within the department. We need to look. The various issues which are you know, hampering the delivery of services to the citizen as a whole or to the masses as a whole. And where are the uh, you know, challenges, where are the issues in fact? You now, uh, I'll go side by side explaining the passport seva, how we have unveiled the passport seva across the country. And uh, again, I am very proud to say that such a voluminous project, you know, in a year now we have touched upon uh, 80 lakhs passport in a year. Such a voluminous project we have involved uh, within one and a half year. Successfully we have involved. Now, before you uh, look into your, uh, within the department, you, know, you need to see where are the gaps. Now, to realize that, you know, to, to come out of those gaps, one need to have a uh, focused vision. We had that, we had that in mind. Now, when we started Passport Seva project, we had three, four things in uh, basically in mind. One was the reach, you know, uh, uh, right after the independence, uh, when we have started uh, issuing passport in India, uh, until uh, maybe up to 2008, 2009, I'll say. Till 2009, we had hardly 37 passport offices across the country. Now, such is the, uh, if the uh, demand is growing, as I rightly said, uh, in a tune of 80 lakhs passport in a year, how will you serve with those 37 passport offices? It was never been possible and that's how we thought, how to extend the reach, you know? Such a limited office, such a limited locations, we can't serve such a huge demand. So then we started expanding the reach. Now, how do you do that? You know, in government, you have limited resources. Uh, problem of funds, capital investment, and then we came out uh, with a beautiful concept called PPP concept. And the beauty of the Passport Seva project is, you know, till today, after unveiling of 77 Passport Seva Kendra across the country, we have not spent a single buy. No, every investment has been done by our service partner. Now, what is that uh, then we have paid? Then this model, like uh, Mr. Rao was also telling, uh, my address speaker, Mr. Mittal was telling, you know, these are the models we have invented as such, but we may need to relook. Now, now when we started Passport Seva project, we say that, you no, know, let let keep the sovereign resource within our uh, control. And then we paid the money for the sovereign resources, like uh, software, uh, licenses, system software, licenses, and data center cost. This is the only investment as on date ministry has done. The remaining entire in investment in a tune of 600 to 700 crores that is being spent by service provider. Now, how the service provider will get back the money? It's purely based on SLA. It's purely SLA driving. There are 27 tight SLAs. Now, your service assurance is confirmed. Your sustainability is confirmed because the service provider will be in tow to meet the service level because he has to get back those 600 crore money he has already invested for. Now for that, uh, the service transaction cost we have built as part of the contract. So every passport being processed by the service provider, 
and that too as per the contract, whatever the functions we have uh, defined for them, mainly the non-sovereign functions, they will get a 199 rupees no? per passport per processing fee. Now this fee will continue to be paid over the uh, next six year of periods. No? Now as I rightly said, uh, probably if uh, I personally say uh, look into it, probably even the data center cost also we could have made part of the service transaction cost. But that's how the model evolves, you, know, you have to learn, you have to learn. Then I find actually after the implementation of the uh, Passport Seva project that there was no question of investing even the hardware money what we have invested in the data center. That we have, could have built in the service transaction cost. So these are the probably uh, learnings uh, we will gain from each of these nation mode projects. And similar uh, is the case with the Passport Seva project. So as I rightly said when we started we had three things in mind. One was the reach. Second was the transparency, you know. Earlier when you apply for a passport, you never know where exactly it is lying, which desk it is lying or which uh, table it is lying, under the table or below the table or up the table, you know. You need to approach someone. So the transparency, accountability, that was the big question in our mind. Then the third is the volume. As I rightly said, the demand was growing like anything. We have hardly a strength of 2,000 people in the entire uh, central passport organization. So now how do you serve with these 200 people? And that too, these uh, employees, what we have in our department, these are purely uh, in the age range of maybe 40 and above. Uh, making them computer literate, working them at least 6 hours uh, in front of the terminal, it was a daunting task. No? Then we thought, okay, this is the only mode, the partnership mode, which will fetch in some of the resources. And believe me, we have uh, added almost 4,000 to 5,000 workforce as part of this partnership, which could never been possible, which could have never been possible uh, by the government recruitment and other channels. No? So these were the three things we have started the Passport Seva. Uh, this I have spoken, these were our challenges. Now, coming back to, since today we are discussing about institutionalization mechanism within the government de department. So, uh, even when we started Passport Seva project, and uh, I am sure every government department will face these challenges, no? Right from uh, uh, that, whatever effort we are doing till date, no? Most of the government department, we personally see that these are on ad hoc basis, these are uncoordinated manner, these are disjoint efforts, no? You need to join them together. You need to make them uh, 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 re-engineer process-based uh, applications. Then there are uh, other issues, policy and legal issues. Uh, my earlier speaker has spoken about. The third challenge was staffing. I rightly said uh, we had hardly 2,000 uh, across central passport organizations, which we have added another 5,000. Then perception of ICT. You no. Know, uh, I can say that under the Passport Seva project, we have made ICT as a business driver. It is no more a support function. Now, every decision we take, there is a business value included into it. And perhaps that is the way you should look forward. Now, let, let's not think that ICT is simply a support function. Let let be as a business driver. So, every bit of IT investment, whatever you do within the department, think of a business value. No? Think of where actually it is adding value, be it on the process side, be it on the uh, efficiency side, be it on the accountability side, where exactly it is adding to my business value. Uh, it should result into a uh, uh, you know, revenue. The lesser integration and minimum collaboration, whatever effort we are doing till today, you know, uh, these are purely on a silo basis, ad hoc basis. But today, uh, after the uh, complete revamping of the passport seva, after the complete uh, uh, re-engineering process, what we have done, I can surely say that my database format, my database structure, it can be easily, easily shared with any of the other government department. And even today, all the intelligence agency, all my missions and posts abroad, uh, other agencies like uh, all our uh, uh, immigration check post, they are accessing the passport database. So that is the way you have to look uh, forward saying that tomorrow going forward I need to collaborate, I need to integrate. Then all the legacy equipment and facilities, no, uh, the 
effort goes into within the department, we have seen that it's mere a computerization effort. Now, it's never been an automation kind of this thing. It's mere a computerization effort. That means whatever investment you do within the department, you never look into your you know, further what value addition it is actually going to do you know, on the process side, on the system side, on the policy side, on the uh, legal or, and other issues, you know, on the management information system side, how, how far it is helping me uh, to create a business value, whether it is within the department or to the stakeholder. Funding was the uh, greater challenge, in fact. All government department, uh, even though you do a capital investment uh, uh, in a tune of, let's say, crores of rupees, but that sustainability becomes a question mark. So then we thought, uh, let's do a uh, funding which uh, sustains over a long run. And that's how we came across, as I rightly said, service transaction cost based uh, uh, payment to be done to the service provider. Now these were my major stakeholders. Why I have captured this uh, slide is, now every uh, project, be it a vision mode project, be it your local, uh, within the departmental project, there are stakeholders, no? you need to define the stakeholder. Who are my stakeholders and who is the major stakeholder? Definitely in our case also, citizen was the major custom, uh, stakeholder. But to deliver uh, services to the citizen who are other stakeholders who will create problems or their processes may create a problem no, while delivering services to the citizens. Now, for us, the major stakeholders were police and uh, India Post. Uh, I can say police was the major stakeholder because my entire process is whatever uh, revamping we have done within the department, let's say uh, within 45 minutes to one hour, I assure you that passport is granted but subject to clear police verification. That means your entire thing remains. So that part, that granting decision in front of the citizens, one visit, all have been taken care under the part of Passport Seva project. But then what is remaining? Subject to police verification. And that is a big subject, let me tell you. Now, what we have done then in the Passport Seva? Uh, then in the police verification process also, now the form uh, travels electronically. There is a uh, uh, tracing process where exactly it is lying. And there is a escalation mechanism being triggered up to the uh, sometime DGP level of the state. So now that, that channel also it is working. Within Delhi, uh, uh, the earlier system we used to take almost three months minimum for a police verification to come. Today I can uh, say that it is happening within 21 days just because of the, the kind of accountability you build within each of these channels. And still we are not able to go up to Thana level. We have only done up to the uh, district level. Suppose I move up to the Thana level, probably I can reduce back to 15 days. But uh, that's the take. Let's see. The, uh, other good thing what we have done in passport seva is you need to have a uh, single visit. No? Uh, you you uh, need not ask the citizen to come again and again. You have to have a single visit. No? No? Uh, multiple visits creates problems. No? All side, accountability side, transparency side. So we have uh, come out with a single visit phenomenon in the passport seva kendra. I have spoken about, uh, we have created a business driver value from the uh, whatever investment we have done in ICT. These are the things I think you can go, uh, go across. Really we have set a standard, you know, how a project is implemented, such a uh, huge and large uh, mission mode project. Digital inclusion we have taken care of, go green we have taken care of. This is one of the simple of the passport seva uh, kendra which have come across. We have 77 passports here working right across the country. These are the numbers. It, by itself, it speaks. Some of the feedbacks uh, from each uh, kind of uh, citizens we have here. 
Now looking forward, uh, this is the last slide, uh, let me spend two minutes here. Looking forward now, uh, as I rightly said, when you are talking, uh, talking about inclusiveness or uh, making it uh, institutional, you have to look that uh, it's not only within the department, how do you share your data, how do you share your information with the <laughs> other departments. We have already started integra integrating with uh, Aadhaar. Aadhaar we are already accepting as POI and POA. Uh, we are also doing seeding of Aadhaar in the passport database. And the third thing uh, forward is we are going to do a real-time authentication with Aadhaar also. But as on date, we have accepted uh, Aadhaar as a POI and POA. Then our next uh, target forward is we will integrate 180 missions abroad we have where we do passport related work. So that is the integration we are going to take care of. Police verification process we are trying to extend up to Thana level, but uh, then we are dependent on other emission work projects like CCTNS and all. If they come up fast, we are ready. No? From our side, we are ready. Then to cover the remote areas, especially in uh, Northeast state, we are coming up with another 15 uh, passport seva lagu ketra. Because those are the states which are not yet been uh, touched by the passport seva. So we are now coming up with another 15 lagu ketra. This is the entire uh, map you can see here and there you will find passport seva kendra so across the country. Uh, this is our website one can reach to our call center. Thank you. Thank you very much.